What's up, Jennifer Aniston? <laughs> That's a good one. What's up? Um, I don't, I don't know what to call you. Yep, I win that round. You do win that round. I was trying to think of like a famous cartoon duo that mm. we could be. So like I could call you like Chip and you could call me Dale or Sherman and Peabody or... Who the fuck is Sherman and Peabody? Don't you remember Sherman and Peabody? They had a time machine and they would go back and forth in time. Sherman had glasses. Mr. Peabody was a dog with glasses. Nope. <laughs> you don't remember that? Sounds pretty good though. All right. I'm going to start this out with a hot... Hey, can you guys go rate and review us on Apple Podcasts? Mm -hmm. It really helps us out for visibility. And you can write nice things about us and then we'll feel good inside. Yeah. Yeah. And also you can write uh, What's Up Weirdo Podcast on the wall of your favorite bathroom. Yeah, you can do that. Sure. <laughs> we'll have free stickers at Michigan Paracon, but also, sure, just write on stuff. Whatever you want to do. The, the world is burning. Nothing matters, really. So just nope. write, write it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Someone's outside the house. You guys, my neighbor's landscaper is out and Toad is locked in. Welcome to the beginning of the podcast where we talk about landscaping. Oh my God, I did it again. <laughs> I didn't even mean to, bro. I didn't mean to. Okay, but I do have to elaborate on Toad being crazy lately. He's been a demon, an absolute demon. The last five days I've been so stressed out because Michigan Paracon's coming. I have so much stuff to repair. Repair. Prepare. I had to write my whole presentation, pull all of of our pre-orders for our merch and bag everything up and do all the things anyway so me and you went on a short gale event on thursday and picked up olive garden carry out so i go i get back in the house i plop it on the counter and i go to let the dog out as one does the dog goes out and brings me back another fucking full body dead squirrel again but it wasn't fully dead no it wasn't actually you're right it was writhing and it ruined my life it literally was the last motion that it ever made in its life right in front of my eyeballs and and then Toad laid there and looked at me like, can you fix it? Can you fix it? And I'm like, no, I think I can't fix it this time. And then I poke, I put on rubber gloves and I poked it to see if it was alive, to see if I had to call like an animal rehabber and it was not alive. And then I had to get out my Olive Garden out of the bag and I put it in the Olive Garden bag because I didn't know what to do. <sighs> And then I was like disgusted and then I couldn't eat. And But then I eventually did eat because it was Olive Garden. But I'm telling you right now, if it was anything but Olive Garden, I wouldn't have ate for the rest of the night. I would have been done. I would have been like, I can't eat. That was so sad and gross. The dog had a dead squirrel in his mouth again. So this is dead squirrel mouth part two. Are we too sensitive? No. Okay, just making sure. I don't, it hurts me as, like, I swear to you, it hurts me as bad when I see a dead animal as if it was a person. I'm yeah. The only reason I'm asking that is because I mowed my lawn yesterday and Right as I pushed the lawnmower forward, there were like two big crickets and I saw the mower go over the top of them. Ow. My day was ruined. <laughs> They probably wiggled under. I'm hoping they did. I went back and looked after the, like, the lawnmower went across, and I was like, maybe it just smushed them down in the dirt a little, but they're fine. But I still, the sensitivity level is insane. You just talked about landscaping again. I know. Anyway, so then, yeah, so that was disgusting and sad. So then, two nights ago, it was like the last time of the night that I'm letting the dog out. I had done so much shit that day. I was like, okay, finally, I just need to go to sleep. I was like so excited to get in bed. He goes out side rolls in fucking mystery shit or something it's mystery wildlife shit or barf i don't know what it was but he came in covered head to toe because when dogs yeah he's stoked about it that's good that's a good story <laughs> right okay cool so he like when dogs smell something they're obsessed with they roll in it so he rolled in shit from head to toe and walked into my house at one in the morning like that and i had to clean him off and i was devastated and then i had to take a shower myself because i was disgusted and I couldn't get the smell away from us. What a good boy. He knows I'm stressed out. Why is he doing this? He's crazy. But then I'm like not even mad. I'm not mad. After he does it and we're all settled in and clean, I'm like, you're crazy. I'm like, I wouldn't want him. I wouldn't want him any other way. I love his spirit. Like, I don't even care. Like, Bean would have never done the stuff that Toad does, ever. Toad's out of his mind, and I love it. It makes me happy for him. It's his way of getting you to think outside of your normal frustrations for every day. I know. He's just, like, distracting me with nonsense. Yep. He's such a 
goob. But I really do think last time he brought me a dead squirrel and this time he's like not, they weren't bit up. They're not, he just like softly holds its back and brings it to me like, look, mom, can you help this thing? And I can't, unfortunately, but. Yeah, he just wants you to fix it. I know. He sees it running around the yard and when it's not running, he knows something's wrong with it. I know, that's so sad. Like he wants a little friend and he's like, can you fix it? Yeah, and today he doesn't even remember. He does not remember, no. And I'm sure it's going to happen again. <laughs> Wait, I'm getting really good at picking up dead squirrels. At least he didn't bring this in to my living room rug like last time, but it was a real bum out. It's a wild four minute opener for this podcast on dead squirrel. I know. <laughs> I had tattoo clients again the other day and they were really, no offense to them, but they were really old. It was like a mom and a, and her mom, but they were both like quite old. So I was like kind of tough. They were like not chatty either. And I have my own private tattoo studio. So it was like a struggle for a while. I'm like trying to get conversation out. And they were very nervous too. They kept acting like I was going to fuck them up, which is the worst energy for me to have. It's like, don't act like I don't know what I'm doing because I do. And this is going to come out perfect. Anyway, so once I was past the first lady, they got like way more chill. Like they realized I knew what I was doing. So anyway, so to like get the ball rolling more, I was like, I'm going to ask this out of nowhere, you guys. I'm like, have you ever had a, a haunted experience? Have you ever seen a ghost? Do you have any stories? Because they're older. I don't know. I feel like they've had a lot of life. Like one of y'all's got a, and the one, they like chuckled at I'm like, oh yeah, here it comes. I'm like, they do have one. <laughs> and the one lady was like, well, I did have something happen. She's like, my, I think she said it was her cousin. She had like a rich cousin or something. And she's like, they bought this plantation in Tennessee. And I go, here we go. I'm like, oh. I'm like, all of those are haunted. And she's like, yeah. So she's like, I think she said that like her and maybe her somebody, I forget who was a friend or somebody had like hung out at that plantation for a couple of weeks when they were younger to like help out or like make money. I don't really remember what it was, but they said they were cleaning all the rooms or like straightening up the rooms and, you know, they were done and they went wherever. And then the cousin was like, didn't you all say you straightened up this one room? And they're like, yeah, we did all of them. They're all done. We know that we did them. <laughs> And the, and the lady's like, okay, come here and look at it. And like, they go back into this room and like the whole bed, it was like a huge like bed with like headboard and foot posts and like a big fancy bed. It was completely turned around mm. and then on the bed, even though it was turned up, like all the, they're like the, the pillows were at the wrong end. The blankets were at the, it was complete. Everything was turned around. I'm like, what the fuck? And she's like, and I saw it with my own eyes and I know that we cleaned it and we were the only ones there. And she's like, she said her, her uh, cousin had a bunch more experiences in the house too and she's like that was the only thing I've ever experienced but that was real because I saw it and um but anyway so that I was also frustrated at that appointment because I your ink bottles when you're a tattooer they like snap shut and sometimes they don't and then when you shake them when you have a new appointment you can shake it all over yourself and I fucking shook my, the bottle all over the wall so I was discombobulated so anyway so I tweeted about spraying the ink all over the wall and I have to redo this comment somebody wrote did that once with hot pink worm dip used for dying disc golf discs and wrecked my white wall and windsill windowsill i'm like hot pink worm dip is literally a whoop <laughs> episode title i'm like i didn't know that this existed so they i didn't even know they died disc golf. i don't know anything about disc golf i have way too many friends that play disc golf and i've it, never never been asked and i have no idea what it is or yeah. hard, nothing allegedly there's hot pink worm dip that they use to die these discs and now it's going to be an episode title because it has to be but anyway that led me to i wanted to tell you that our friends at outer realms candles it's at outer realms candles on instagram outer realms bathworks they like sell at a lot of paranormal events and they're buddies of ours and they are making us custom woo pod candles oh Aricon. and and she's like what do you want for your scent profiles or what about words what ideas do you have and she was already making a dry boy one for the aliens mm -hmm. the dry boy aliens so the scent pro i'm like make the scent profile be like campfire so it's like burnt so the dry boy <laughs> candle is gonna be like campfire and then i said let's do a coco loco one for toad and that one's gonna be like hot chocolate and then i'm like wait we need one that's just like dead worm i'm like we need a worm <laughs> i'm like we need worm candle because we <laughs> 
you know, like worms or we look like worms. So the last candle is called, well, I didn't want to call it dead worms because that's not cool, but it's called forest gnome. So that's like for you and your gnomes. And then the profiles are like moss, forest, rain, fresh rain, and worm. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? That is exciting. I have to go back to something though. Yeah, do it. What are the chances that you can do my eyebrows before Michigan Paracon? I'm not doing it not zero. Okay, fine. I'm not doing anything before. Why didn't you ask me this a million? I've been doing this for why would you ask me this now? I was just thinking about it. There's no way I can do it before. Because when I get overly nervous, I pull my eyebrows. Okay, I can fill them in with you, not for you with a uh stuff that I use. And I have a bald spot now. I'll fix it, but I can't tattoo you before then. But I'll tattoo you after. Why'd you do that? I just do it when I get nervous. People have that. That's why I have a job. I have to put their eyebrows back on. It's uh, what is that called? I don't know. I, I know there's a name for it. And I know that some people do it and then eat the hair. I know. I'd listen. I, I don't do that. I just pull it. <laughs> Listen, I really hope they're not fucking listening, but I went to grade school with a kid that did that and he would do it during class and we would all see it. And, I, and we we're all like, why are you doing that, bro? It's, he couldn't help. Is it? Hang on, I got to look it up. I think the I know. Trichinosis? No, that's what you get from meat. I think oh. it's like a trickle. It's something with a T, I think. I know. I had the trickle part in my head too. It's like trickle mania or trickle. I don't know. Hang on, I got to look it up. Yeah. It's trichotillomania. Trichotillomania. That was close. I had the trick part and the mania in my head. I didn't have the middle. Yeah. Oh, you can't do this the whole episode. Maybe you can just fill it in with makeup. Yeah, I can super do that. Okay, that's fine. Good talk. Mm. I have a lot of weird, These are. this is another one of my weird nervous habits. Like when I hold someone's <gasps> hand, if I'm at like in a club bar situation, we've talked about that before, like I'll unintentionally hold people's hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but like I also press on my finger with my thumb. I pull my eyebrows. Like I have a bunch of weird nervous tics. You know what's crazy is there was this video that came out in the past week or so that what's his face um wait for it who's that cute guy the fucking guy <laughs> the guy we were, we were literally talking about him last week was playing like fantastic four guy pedro what pedro is this? pascal thank you anyway there's a video of him at some comic-con or something and he's like awkward he does the thing where he's nervous on stage and he holds the lady's hand next to him and people were saying how fucking creepy it was and they're like no he has anxiety and his friend realizes he has anxiety yeah this happens <laughs> yes yeah, so that's so weird you brought that up that's like the same thing and people are giving him shit it's like okay he's right there on stage he's not being creepy creepy he's yeah. fucking nervous speaking of cute guys did you see Hugh Jackman's abs from Deadpool okay listen I didn't <laughs> yeah but bro <laughs> I did watch it. I did see it. Not, not just the clip. I watched the whole fucking movie. You watched the whole movie? Yes! What did you think? It's so good. It was it was really a blast. It has a slow start, but once it gets going, it's just nonstop. Really it's, fun. Time. It's really fun. I saw Tyler, our homie Tyler Main in there. Yep. For like eight seconds, but he was in there. And then also when they did the all the Deadpools. Are we and, doing spoilers? No, I'm trying not to. But this is not really a spoiler because they don't show it. So if I don't say it out loud, nobody's going to know. Or, But I knew right when he talked that Cowboy Deadpool was Matthew McConaughey, and I was right. I like looked it up on IMDb. I'm like, I knew it was his voice. And your thoughts about Dogpool? I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. <laughs> I was so glad. Right when he, I was so glad that he was there and that he continued to be a thing and that Deadpool was so concerned <laughs> about Dogpool the whole time. It was so cute dog pool so oh also i i watched an interview with them and he's like there's not a lot of things that can like ruffle hugh jackman's feathers or gross him out but he's like bro he's like the way there's a part you guys if you haven't seen it but it seems like the whole world has seen it at this point it's the highest uh selling r-rated movie of all time now but anyway there's i think several scenes at least one bad one where dog pool like puts his entire tongue in ryan reynolds mouth and he said to get him to do it he put salmon paste in his mouth <laughs> And then the dog like ate it out and he's like, I've never seen you Jackman so close to that <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was good. But no, okay, so Hugh Jackman is, in October, he's going to be 56 years old, and he looks like that. It's crazy. It's crazy. There's not a man, a woman, or child in this world that would not be attracted to Hugh Jackman in this movie. I told you, like, in the last podcast, I think, they do, a, it's like a running joke setup. And so, like, at the end, when his shirt blasts off, <laughs> literally blasts off of no, him. It explodes <laughs> off of his body, Yeah. <laughs> It's so good. It's so funny that there's a major reveal and it's just Hugh Jackman's abs. 
I know. I wish they would have done it sooner. We were all waiting for it. So it's for you. It was for me. I've seen all of them. And I'm sure there's going to be a bunch more now. I don't know. There will be. Hugh Jackman said he'll do, he'll play Wolverine again. So I don't know with these Marvel films. I know. It's fine. But I like when movies break the fourth wall. They do that all the time. They talk to the camera. They say shit that like about stuff. I love that. Or but see, they, like, that's what's crazy for like people who aren't comic book people. Mm-hmm. Deadpool does that in the comic book. Oh. Deadpool constantly talks to the reader. Like, wait until you see what happens on this next page. Like, he'll he'll do that. Oh, that's cute. I like that. So them doing it in the film is a perfect extension of the comic book. I didn't know that, and I like it. Yeah. This is going to be the most Box Toad's ever done in an episode, bro. <laughs> Honey pie. You can't. Okay, you gotta take a nap, okay? Just take a breather. But no, I loved it. I really loved it. There was a lot of shots that I won't spoil, but there was a lot of shots and parts I really liked, and we could talk about it after. Also, I feel like, and I can't spoil this either, because it's like, whatever, it's not, it's literally not important to any plot points, but I think there's a cute thing about Pretty Woman in it. I'll explain it to you later, but I think there was a Pretty Woman Easter egg that made me really happy. Well, good work, buddy. Well, we have to talk about still, since we were so high on that one, we have to talk about the one that we were low on, which is cuckoo we went and saw cuckoo <sighs> uh, we don't like to say that we don't like movies and we don't like to say that we hate movies but bro you guys this is the closest <laughs> listen i appreciate all of the hard work that goes into making any film just to get a movie on the screen is a difficult process and i appreciate all of it but when i walked out of that movie theater i felt like someone kicked me in the dick i know we were so bummed out i had no work we had no work you go i i don't even remember what it was but you said like no you said you we walked out and you said well that was a movie and i said was it really i know <laughs> you said something like oh well dan stevens something or no you said one thing and then i go and then we both looked at each other and went and that's it and that's, that's it. our whole thoughts yep. it was terrible we love we both love dan stevens he was great in it he looked cool he had very bright eyeballs uh hunter schaefer is lovely and wonderful uh it looked good it was directed good it just that's where it ends i don't i will for people who are listening to this podcast engage me in person if you loved that movie because i want you to explain and answer questions for me and i want to see if you can because i don't think you can there's um we have to say too i feel and i'm gonna fuck it up because i don't even know what it is but i feel like for people that don't know we're talking about cuckoo is a new horror movie that i've been waiting for all year highly anticipated the what's the premise of the movie hunter schaefer moves to a different country with her dad and her stepmom and then they move into this weird hotel because her dad is helping design a city for dan stevens's character right and dan stevens has a weird accent and then everything starts getting weird and then that's all and then listen this is so funny i go on letterbox my favorite review was this is all the review says it says dan stevens's fuck ass hotel <laughs> <laughs> like exactly what are we doing so there you go it was i've waited all year for it it is not for me somebody else on letterbox said this movie is exactly what it feels like to have the most cinematic dream but when you wake up and try to tell somebody about it you realize it actually sounds like it doesn't make any sense (laughs) (laughs) and then the last favorite review i read was that's it i'm getting a cunty little flute because Dan Stevens plays this weird flute for no reason or maybe there is a reason I don't know once again anyone that listens to this podcast who likes this film I will have you meet me in person and I want you to explain and answer things to me because I don't think you can nobody's going to be able to help that's the thing I I love a complicated movie I love a nonsense movie and then when I read a breakdown I'm like okay I get it that tracks and this movie I'm like I don't even want to read about it I don't want somebody to try to explain it to me because I'll think that they're lying but like even in movies where like I don't I love movies that don't give me all the information I know me too but you need to give me a three percent yeah something like I remember when I went and saw the movie The Road which is like it's in like an apocalyptic film yeah but I went and saw it at the main art theater and it just starts the world has like ended and it, it just starts in an apocalyptic future and when I watched the movie I watched it and it's it's like a tragic movie it's very depressing mm-hmm. but there were two guys sitting in front of me the whole time and every like 10 or 15 minutes one of them would go how did the world end and i kept thinking to myself like it doesn't matter yeah you don't have to give me all the information yeah you're just joining when right so yeah i don't need all of the information but you got to give me some information (laughs) also it's very frustrating when like a movie acts like it's setting up like three different things and you're all going to get these answers and then 
you don't get any. It's like, wait, what was I hanging on for? Yes. But again, we are not telling you not to go see it. I'm sure people, I've seen a lot of people say that they loved it. And I, it's got a 68% on Rotten Tomatoes. But it's making me feel insane because I've seen some tweets where people are like, oh my God, I loved it. And I'm in my head, I'm like, really though? What did you love about it? Besides Dan Stevens and Hunter Schaefer being like really cool and fashionable and good looking people. Like aside from that, what was good? That was tough for us. Well, we've seen, honestly, in the last literally million years, we've seen so many good movies that when we get one dud, it's like, well, whatever. We were due for a dud, I feel like. Yep. It's fine. I mean, we had that dud with Twisters. No, we did not. (laughs) But if you don't want to see the movie Cuckoo, I suggest because new movie, old movie, John, do, 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 do. You should watch Village of the Damned Mm -hmm. from 1960, Mm -hmm. which is based on a book by John Wyndham called The Midwich Cuckoos. And I will tell you, Village of the Damned is way more fucked up than the movie Cuckoo. For those of you, no spoilers for that movie, the 1960s one, but here's the concept because they give it away to you in the first half of the movie. Uh Everybody in a town falls asleep for a day. Mm. The army goes to investigate. If you try and get into the town, you immediately fall asleep. Mm. 24 hours later, everybody wakes up. All the women in the village are pregnant. This is a 1960s film. Nine months later, they they all give birth to a specific amount of boys and girls who are all blonde haired with white eyes who can communicate with each other te- uh, telepathically. Mm-hmm. It's fucking crazy. And the end is great. 1960s. They don't hold back. It's great. Nice. So watch that instead of Cuckoo. That's Village of the Damned 1960s. Is there a remake of that or is there only one? They also made Children of the Damned and then they made Village of the Damned again. I think Christopher Reeves is in the remake. Yeah, I feel like i've seen one and it's not the one i need to have seen no you need to see the original with george saunders who's also in psychomania watch psychomania too because that's a great film looks like your favorite movie it is like my favorite movie okay so y'all i'm not gonna try and be a bummer because i feel like it's i don't know why i think it's funny i don't know why i keep laughing about it it's not funny but bro you guys know i had surgery two different surgeries like only what 10 or 11 months ago so i went to get an ultrasound the other day and they told me i have literally (laughs) a baseball size over a baseball size fucking mass in my stomach. What? I, listen, when I got home, well, no, I went to the ultrasound and then they put the results in my chart and I saw it in my chart and I'm like, this is a fucking joke. And then I was telling friends and sending them videos and I was cackling on the fucking videos. I'm like, how do I have a fucking mass in my stomach that's as big as a baseball? And it's been making me piss like a racehorse. So I have to pee every fucking five seconds because something's laying on my bladder. It's really, really cool. Is it Alfredo? It's a, yeah, it's definitely a big ball of <laughs> noodles with alfredo <laughs> pasta around it you said it was my parasitic twin oh that is right it's not it's not hey i mean maybe it is fuck it we have to figure it out doesn't that happen to people who eat their hair don't they get big balls inside of them well then you should have it on me sideburns i don't eat the hair i just pull it <laughs> You say that you don't, but maybe you do. I don't. Listen, do you want to hear how fucking stupid medical people are? Listen, no offense to people in medicine, but I know, and I know this from people in medicine, but you know how they're like, there's a lot of stuff that we don't know what it is until it happens. And like, you're only as good as your experience and blah, blah, blah. And there's things that come up that even doctors are like, well, we don't fucking know what this is or they miss shit, whatever. Nobody's perfect. Doctors aren't perfect either. So anyway, this literally happened today. The lady calls me because this happened. This is really an over share for everybody but fuck it this happened at a urologist but they're saying it's like probably related to like reproductive stuff which has been all of my other problems so she calls me today not even kidding she goes well we saw that there's this you know you have a you have a situation i'm like i know i saw it in my chart and she's like she's like you must be having some discomfort and whatever i'm like yeah i am and then she's like so it looks like it's like you know oh very like from your ovary on that side and blah 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 and i go i'm gonna stop you right there because I don't have an ovary on that side. (laughs) (laughs) And she goes, oh. I'm like, yeah, oh. And she goes, well, maybe it. She's like, I don't know why it got there as like a, like it made itself as a fucking stand-in, but ovaries aren't that big. I don't know what it's doing. So anyway, I have a fucking baseball in my stomach and I'm probably going to have to have another surgery and I'm fucking irritated. So that happened. Sorry, buddy. I know it's so stupid. It literally came out of nowhere. I don't know what it is. I hope it's okay. I'm just keeping everybody updated. You guys know everything about our life. I'm not trying to keep secrets. So also you can like, a lot of people are sending out good vibes to our 
our good homie Andrea Perrin right now. She's facing some health problems. So send good vibes to Andrea. Send good vibes to all. There's quite a few other people right now who have medical issues online. Send good vibes to them. Send good vibes to my Alfredo ball in my stomach. Um, <laughs> Is this now hot pink Alfredo worm ball? Yeah, hot pink worm dip. <laughs> fucked in Alfredo. Parasitic <laughs> twin. <laughs> the longest title ever. I'm going to change the subject. Wait, that's... really quickly. It, there's something so funny about like x-rays and doctors and like sometimes the ineptitude or uncaring or like I don't know what it is yeah but like the last time I went to the doctor I got a full chest x-ray mm -hmm. and so they did the x-ray and then like I'm sitting in the waiting room and like the nurse comes like running into the room Jeez. and is like we have to do your x-ray again right now and I was like immediately like I am already bad at the doctor my blood pressure just jumped and my heart starts racing and stuff and she's like get back in front of the screen blah 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 blah, blah. and so like I'm standing there and I'm like and she goes oh you don't have to be nervous we just mistook the photograph oh what the fuck and I was like what are you doing to me yeah act like you were gonna show me that there's like a wrench stuck in my fucking lungs yeah like I got an Alfredo ball in my lungs <laughs> Like, just come into the room and say, like, we need to retake the picture. Don't come yeah. in there and be like, yeah. something's wrong. You got to come with me right now. We got to do that again. But no, mine was the opposite. Like, I did this ultrasound, like, over a week ago. And then it shows up in your chart literally, like, 24 hours later. And then no one called me. And yeah. then no one, no one started to arrange anything. No, I didn't get a message that said, we're going to transfer this to your OB. Nothing. It was like, and then they finally called today. I'm like, okay, well, finally. You know, one of the most frustrating things when I was dealing with my mom's illness and everything uh -huh. every like she went to the same doctors and the same hospital over and over and again for six years uh -huh. every time she went we had to bring a list of the medicines that she was taking the prescription she was on and what she had been diagnosed with because for some reason they never had the same charts that we had that was messed up that's how people die to give people the wrong meds and then they're like whoopsie crazy but another this is like not even a story it's just a small comment that relates <laughs> to the loop pod i i had to go to my well not had to but i went to my nephew's third birthday party was it last weekend it was last weekend anyway there was it was my little nephew who is so freaking cute and then other random kids were there my grandma my grandma does not give a fuck she says stuff everybody's grandma don't give a fuck actually for that matter i know you guys know that your grandparents will say whatever they want to say out loud my grandma was sitting there next to me saying how all the other kids at the party were homely <laughs> 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 and I'm like, I'm like, Grandma, I'm gonna have to agree with you. And that's so fucking funny because we say on the podcast that about babies being ugly, and then my grandma's calling these like one and two year olds walking around homely. I was like, and there's such a good way. If you look up the definition of homely, it's so mean. It is mean. I know. So I thought it was funny. It sounds like it's not. It sounds like you're calling them like fine looking, but it doesn't mean fine. It means ugly. <laughs> What was that show where they used to turn, take people and then just give them complete facelifts and body lifts? And the then re what was it called? Swan. The Swan. That was like my shit. If that was, I don't know why they don't, I mean, it's horrible. It's literally horrible. That's why they're not bringing it back. But I wish they would because there'd be, because back then I feel like there wasn't that many people that would even sign up for it. But now everybody on earth wants plastic surgery. I don't think I ever watched that show. I just would watch the reveals. Ooh, it was so good. So I could see the before and afters. I, somebody's got to put that on streaming because that's one of the most satisfying satisfying shows that's ever been <laughs> Yeah, you guys, people would look at, like, no offense to anybody, and we're not, listen, we don't give a fuck what people look like, you just have to be a nice person anyway, but listen, some of these people, some of these people looked a little nuts, and then at the end, they, like, they quite literally looked like they went through, like, a machine and came out a different person, which they kind of did, but it was nuts. The before, it, no, you've never seen before and afters like this in your life. Can I tell you a reality show that got shown to me because of the algorithm that was the most amazing reality show that I've seen? I, I didn't see it when it originally aired, which I think was in the 90s what the all gay episode of next on mtv what did they only have one i think they the, the one that i saw was amazing everybody should find <laughs> the episode of next which is all gay guys it's amazing it's it's such a piece of history it's so fantastic i love that show 
I used to love that show. Another very cute side thing that happened at the birthday party was my dad told me, because I was asking him how his puppo was, because he didn't adopt him that long ago. So I'm like, how's puppo going? Then he tells me, you guys. Okay, we adopted his puppo from a rescue, but like the rescue, he wasn't like locked at the rescue. He was like with a foster, right? So the foster met up with us, gave us the dog. We went home with it, la la la. That same foster is fostering another puppy right now. And my dad is going to take it. What? Your pop is going to have three pups? Yes. Two new adopted puppos and one older doggo that he already had. But I'm like, oh my God, I love that so much. God. I know. Everybody adopt. It's so cute. Papa pups. I'll keep you guys posted on that. I really want to see it. Well, I think he did show me. It looked like just like a little mutt crazy guy again. I don't know what it is. And then I just have one more last thing that's absolutely insane. Wait a second. So I'm going to tell you, there was a lady walking her dog by my house the other day. Yeah. And the dog started rolling where I'm planting grass uh-huh. and she like yanked on the dog's collar and was like they're trying to grow grass there and i was sitting outside smoking like watching the dog roll around in the grass and i was like let, I, I told her i said it's fine let him roll around like it's fine and she's like i know you're trying to grow grass there and i'm like no, just let him be a dog why are people so crazy like why are you so mad at your dog for being a dog i mean unless he's lit- laying in shit like mine did like <laughs> All in grass. Oh, I'm going to be traumatized by that for a minute, by the way. He came in. The shit was like, listen, you guys, this is so gross. The shit was like gray. He came in. It looked like he was literally covered in fresh cement. I'm like, why do you look like that? It was so fucking gross. Anyway. He was so happy. No, actually, he looked like he literally knew he knew he fucked up. (laughs) He looked at me like, I am so guilty. And this was the worst thing I've ever did. And even when he was in the bathtub, he's like, thank you for getting this off of me. I'm an idiot. (laughs) He really looked like he knew he fucked up. Anyway, last thing. This is so crazy and I didn't know it. And I feel like there's some part of you that's going to be like, oh, I knew that. And I'm going to be like, no, the fuck you didn't. And it's going to annoy me. I have no idea how I didn't know this already. Okay. Okay, go slow because if you just burst out and then I say I did know that, you're going to not believe me. But I'm not going to believe you even if if you you go slow and I interrupt you and tell you what you're going to tell me, then it'll show that I knew it. No, I'm going to read it too fast because I don't want to know. You're not. Nobody knows. I hope I don't know. It's from a tweet, so I'm just going to read the tweet verbatim. Tumbled down a rabbit hole today, discovered that the driller killer from Slumber Party 2... So you don't know where I'm going with it. No. Is the son of Little Caesars Pizza founder, Detroit Tigers Red Wings owner, Mike Illich... Who paid Rosa Parks' rent for years after she was attacked so she could live in a safer place. And you look it up, and it's fucking him. The driller killer in Slumber Party 2 is Mike Illich's son. That's funny. Quite literally, how do we live here and we didn't know that? I don't know, but it's great. (laughs) It's on real. It's like my new favorite horror movie fact. That is really funny. That guy in the movie is kind of hot, too. (laughs) I'm I'm so, I'm still reeling from this information. (laughs) It's so crazy to me. Did he ever make any more movies? No, I don't think so. Maybe there was like one. I looked him up on IMDb. I think there's maybe like one other thing and that's it. Like he did two and that's all. And if you look, if you really look at him, you can see it. But I would have never. Right. (laughs) Is that the craziest thing you've ever heard? That is really funny. I know. I'm like, I'm so disappointed in myself that I didn't already know that. Yeah. There was easily 300 topics on this episode. Oh, yeah. But wait, because I do remember now that guy, that Illich son. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when he put out uh, an album? I don't. But I saw when I I spiraled (laughs) after reading the tweet that he did put one out. Yes, it is the most like 80s, 90s thing. He's like Zach Morris suit with like red triangles and shit behind it. I'm like it is the craziest like thing you've ever seen. I wonder if it's on Spotify. It should be. We can put it on on the way to Paracon. His name is like Atlantis or something like that. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Or yeah. <laughs> or Atlantis or something. I can't be- I still can't believe it. That's great. I know I love it. All right, is that all you got? I think so. That's all I got. Okay. I'm like nervous now that during my Paracon performance, I'm going to have to go pee because I have this thing pushing on my fucking bladder. Well, then we'll just get you a bottle and put it underneath the desk. Yeah, I need a fucking catheter. <laughs> I do. What if you're sitting, we can sit you on one of those like toilet seats. Oh, like a camping one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can just pee while you're interviewing people. I don't need to. All right. If we're talking about you peeing, I'm all done. Yeah, that's where it ends. Uh... Mm-hmm.
we're excited to see you all you guys at Paracon. I assume you're all going to be listening to this on the way there. So travel safe. Don't fly off of the Mackinac Bridge. Yeah, that would be bad. Yeah, vibe is going to be super high. Can't wait to see you. Very okay. excited to see all the buddies. Can't wait to see all the bunnies. We're going to get drunkish. I will get drunk. I'm going to get drunk. Because it's also my birthday. Yeah, it's your birthday. Yeah, not today, but. I ordered you one birthday present already. My birthday is actually, it's going to be kind of wild because my birthday is the Saturday of Michigan Paracon. I know. And me, and listen, this is why it's crazy. This is why you're saying it like that. It's because me and him both speak on Friday. So Saturday, it fucking doesn't matter what we do. Getting torn up, everybody. Okay, I'm done. All right, me too. Okay, good work, buddy. Good work, buddy. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. bye.